Anyway, we had a number of writers uh, in, in the book who said, we won't write anything now if we can't get director or producer credit, because we just don't want people messing with our stuff. And then Charlie Peters had that great quote. He said, I'm just so tired of pitching to embryos. <laughs> That's what I wanted to title his chapter. He also told a great story about how much the business has changed. And about eight years ago, he went to a meeting. He got a job, and he went to a meeting. And this is a guy who's written everything. And he went to a meeting, and they were just going to start talking about the story. They weren't anywhere near even developing a script. And the producer said, what do you think it's going to be like opening weekend? He went, you know. And Charlie said, I don't know, 60, 65 and rainy? Huh? You know, it hadn't even just, the guy wanted to talk about the poster. And they hadn't even written the movie yet. You know? But, you know, it's, it's interesting. When we, when we interviewed Sherwood Schwartz, the way he began his interview was saying, when we were in our day, somebody would come in and they, they'd show me a script and I'd say, I just saw something like that on My Three Sons a couple of weeks ago. And I'd throw them out. He says, now people won't accept anything unless it's been done somewhere else to show that it works. He says, you know, my day was creativity and you had to be new and fresh. He says, now everybody wants to be safe. That's, that's so true. And it, it's interesting, a slight change of genres, but I, um, I went to a taping of, of a show. Some, some friends of friends had bought some rehearsal studios in Burbank. And they were having big name groups come in, do a rehearsal in front of a live audience, and then sit and take questions from them. And so we got to see one with Manhattan Transfer, who I love. And they were talking about the difference in the business and saying, when we first started in record companies, you had A&R people who were artists. And so you had artists helping artists get their product done. He says, now it's all accountants. And he says, when we present a project, the word they use is, what kind of tonnage will it do? And they, and they said that word with as much of an air of repugnance as you could do, um, saying they don't care what we put out if it's going to sell a lot. Mm -hmm. And certainly that's even truer in, in movies and TV. And it's sort of a sad commentary that, you know, there there were days, you know, when your dad was around and before, where producers had a sense of, of art and they were looking for good products, and now it's corporations who have, again, the A-word, teams mm -hmm. of them. And it's sort of sad that, that bean counters should should determine what's art. And one of, one of the things that we're finding so interesting is like the stuff that you folks are doing, because... Jeffrey and I gave a talk at a writer's conference down in San Diego, and there was a fellow there from a company named Smashwords. And what he does is he has a website for people who want to do electronic book publishing, and he will help them with the formatting and give them templates and stuff so they can get it, anybody can get out there. And the point he was saying was, until a few years ago, it was a small group of editors and publishers and literary agents who determined what the world would read. They were the gatekeepers. Would your book get published or wouldn't it? And he says, that's changed now. And now anybody can publish a book electronically, get it up on iTunes, get it up on Amazon. They're out there. The same thing has happened with the music industry. You know, there are no more record stores. That's a thing of the past. And you used to have to get a record company to get behind you to afford studio time to go in and make records. Now you've $2,000, you can put out a state-of-the-art quality stuff in your own studio. And what we're seeing more and more now is people now, um, you know, when you wanted to do a movie, just to rent the equipment and, and put it on to film priced you out of the business. Right. Now you can, you can use Avid, you can use Final Cut Pro, um, uh, premiere, and you can do your own feature editing. You can you can do it on video. You can distribute it, all the way down to people doing webisodes and and having vlogs and doing all this stuff. So that now, you don't have to have these big companies, which means they're sort of losing their stranglehold a bit. 
I mean, the only thing that sort of keeps the the movie industry going is the distribution channels. So it's it's all changing very very quickly. Mm. It's kind of fun, and it's it's the interesting thing that technology is doing. Yeah. You know, funny story apropos of nothing. Um, I had a friend years ago who taught in a music department, and she had a a doc in, in piano performance. And just to make small talk, I asked her if she had seen this new sequencing program. Do you know what music sequencing software is? Um, basically, you can take a computer, put in notes from a synthesizer, assign the sounds you want to them, and I could sit down and, and recreate a Beethoven symphony on it. And she looked at me very huffily and said, that's putting musicians out of work. And then later I saw her going in to teach a class, wheeling in a phonograph. And I thought, how funny that she doesn't realize historically that that's the thing that killed live music. That there was a time, you know, when people write music now, um, they, deal, they get a publishing deal with a record company, but publishing used to mean literally publishing sheet music to put on your piano and play, because real people who wanted music in their houses had to play music till the phonograph. And she looks at this new technology and doesn't realize this old technology was there doing that. So it's yeah. interesting, because again, yeah. it, was, it was movie theaters and then TV and now computers, yeah. and all these avenues are opening up for young yeah. filmmakers, young writers, young directors, cinematographers. That's what you guys are doing. It's yeah. basically your... Pioneers. A wild frontier. I will say the one place where they seem to fail at that, and they should have, is when they tried a couple of years ago to replace live music and Broadway musicals, because there's nothing like sitting down, and for what they charge, especially, because there's, you know, like, um, Book of Mormon was like $225 a ticket for a lousy seat. You know, and to get there to pay all that money, and then they're going to can they're going to bring in canned music. So they luckily the unions stood up, and so they made some kind of deal where they have fewer musicians. But I still think there's nothing like live music. You know, it's great. It's great. You know. So, but again, you know, in terms of opportunities, it's like, you know, you said you started out doing radio stuff. You used to have to get on a radio station and very limited number of slots, and you had to jump through hoops, and you had no control, and... It's very empowering. Yeah. And now with video, same thing. You used to have yeah. to be able to get on a network, and... Right. 